Arucheva Israel National TV, and Or Olam, the Center for Biblical Zionism, present Ari Abramowitz and Jeremy Gimpel. The world only hears an Israeli voice. We want the world to hear a Jewish voice. We're all part of the same body, and that body is Israel. It shows Israel this fight is fight because this is where God hangs up. Hashem is with us. He's protecting us. He's brought us to the land of Israel, and we are here to stay. Tuesday nights in Jerusalem are never going to be the same again. Live from the heart of Israel, welcome to Tuesday Night Live in Jerusalem. Shalom everybody and welcome to Tuesday Night Live in Jerusalem. Thank you. Tonight we have an amazing show. We have two of the most powerful spiritual forces in all of Israel. Tonight we're gonna to have Rabbi David Aaron speak with us tonight. And as a special musical guest, we're gonna have Chaim David. Tomorrow, I'm leaving to America on a speaking tour. Yeah. And although, you know, I, Ari and I have been doing that for a while now. And uh, the truth in the beginning, we didn't know exactly where we were going. We didn't exactly always know what to say. But we felt this inner urge that we had to speak on behalf of Israel. And I'll tell you, it's taken us on quite a journey. And although I really don't like to fly, and it's hard to find kosher food on the road, and I've been to some of the weirdest places in the entire world, uncharted territories for Jews. Jews do not go there. Places in the middle of Pennsylvania or in the bottom of Mississippi, and... One thing I've noticed, speaking to Jews of all colors and all shapes, speaking to young kids, university students, non-Jews, if there was ever a time that the world was ready for a spiritual revolution, it was right now. Now, on my last speaking tour, I find myself in the glamorous subways of New York City. Now, as many of you know the story, I've been stabbed in the back. And I'm not talking about the disengagement. I've actually been stabbed in the back. And it happened in New York City. It was a long story, not gonna go into it. It was not a big deal, a few stitches, I was okay. But it was late at night, and I was wearing a kippah and seat seat in a bad neighborhood. But what do I have to fear? And I was walking through and, and I was attacked and I was stabbed. And you know, the guy didn't even have the decency to take my wallet. <laughs> the, the police said he needed to stab a Jew to get into a gang. I hope he got in. <laughs> well, you know, so much for the safety of America. That's the truth. But I just am telling you this story to give you a background about why I have a little bit of a grudge against New York. So I'm here in the subway on my speaking tour with this massive piece of luggage. And I go in and I'm sitting down and in walk these three very large impending figures, tattooed, pierced, in my estimation, something that looked like the guy who stabbed me. So, you know, I got a little bit of a scar. I'm sitting there, I'm not gonna lie. I was a, a little bit nervous. Two of them actually sat down right next to me. There were other places they could have sat, and they sat down right next to me. So the words of Rebbe Nachman echoed in my mind. The whole world is but a, a narrow bridge, and the important thing, the most important thing, is never to fear. And I thought about this, and I internalized this, and I was still afraid. <laughs> But I try not to show it. So I'm sitting down, and they're sort of looking at me, and one says, where are you from? So I said, I'm from Jerusalem. I'm a sharpshooter in the Israeli army. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that out there. 
a little deterrent. And he said, they speak English there? I said, no, I'm, I'm actually from Texas. I was born in Texas, and I moved to Israel. And he said, why'd you do that? And I said, because I'm a Jew, and God is bringing the Jewish people back to the land of Israel. And I said to him, and I said to him, have you heard of the God of Israel? And he said, no. And I said, well, he created the heavens and the earth, and he gave the land of Israel to the Jewish people, and he blesses us, and he protects us. And I actually had on me at the time a land of Israel necklace. It had an earth from Israel, so I took it off, and I gave it to him. And I said, if you wear this and keep the land of Israel close to your heart, and you love and protect the Jewish people, and you stand for Israel, God will protect you. And one of these guys, just one of them, took the necklace, and he was shaking. He said, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you. I'll never forget this. Thank you so much. And he actually helped me off of the subway with my luggage. And as I was walking away, I was clapping as well. And as I was walking away, I was thinking to myself, what a shame it is that I project so often my own fears on those around me. And here, just once, I spoke as a proud Jew, and I talked about God. And I was accepted with such respect, even reverence. And it's really that very commitment which our friends around the world and even our enemies would respect. If we as a nation, if we as a people understood that we are separate, we are unique, and we embrace our role of light unto the nations to teach the world about God, the entire world would change. They would truly respect us and revere us. See, for the last 2,000 years, it's a hard concept for us to understand. I mean, the last 2,000 years, the Jewish people have had one goal, and that was to survive. Every force known to humanity came against the Jewish people to try to extinguish us, put out the flame of the Torah. And against all odds, Generation after generation, we meticulously wrote down letter for letter, not missing one jot or one tittle. But we had one purpose, and that was just to survive. But right now, when we're back in the land of Israel, we're on the dawn of a new era, where we don't need to hide from the world anymore. But it's time for us to take the world head on. We have a mission, and we have a message to the world. And the truth is, the world is waiting to hear that message. All we have to do is stand as proud Jews and share it with them. In 1981, in 1981, Israel, in a miraculous and brilliant military feat, bombed the Osirak nuclear reactor in Iraq. The entire world condemned Israel. The United Nations, unanimous condemnation. America condemned Israel. Everyone condemned Israel. But we said, we did what is right and what is just. That was true Jewish leadership. Now, the leadership we have to assume in the world is not just political and military, but really, predominantly, it's a spiritual leadership. The world right now, I'm sure all of us feel it when we see the news, when we walk the streets, is so dark and confused with so much moral relativism. It's so difficult. What is good seems bad. What is bad seems good. The righteous are vilified. Villains are glorified. We need to bring a moral clarity and a truth to the world. Through real Jewish values, real biblical values, we need to liberate the world from their misconceptions. You see, peace has been hijacked by Hollywood and Western civilization. Peace doesn't mean sticking your head in the sand and hoping for the bad to go away. Shalom comes from the word shalem, which means whole. The covenant of peace in the Torah was given to one man, and it wasn't given to Aaron Cohen. It wasn't given to Aaron the priest who loved everyone, who brought peace amongst his neighbors. It was given to Pinchas, or in English, Phineas, who slayed Cosby and Zimri. He was given the covenant of peace because true peace isn't that we just ignore the bad and hope that it goes away, but it's when good overcomes 
evil. That's real shalom. Shalom isn't shaking the hand of a murderer on the White House lawn. And it's not signing a document with Abbas, whose doctoral thesis is Holocaust denial. Shalom is when the Jewish people start saying what the Jewish people really know. And we start acting the way the Jewish people should really act. The world is waiting. They're watching us. They're anticipating the day that the Jewish people will finally be the light we were always meant to be. So tonight we have a special musical guest, Chaim David. He's one of the authentic originals. He played alongside Reb Shlomo Karabach, Zichrono Livracha, a real pioneer in Jewish music. But as we all know, Jewish music is so much more than just tunes. It's the inner essence, it's the language of our soul. And Chaim David has brought so many Jews closer to God, closer to Judaism, and closer to Israel. And it's an honor for us to have him play for us tonight. But the the Alter Rebbe says that when 10 Jews sit together, even doing nothing particularly holy, but he says that just 10 Jews are sitting in one place, he says, if an angel would so happen to pass by over the heads, would frazzle up from the fire of the Kedusha, the, of those Yidin. How much more so than there's hundreds of Yidin all come to be inspired and to inspire and to be put together as a nation. The love of Yerushalayim, the love of Eretz Yisrael, the love of Am Yisrael, the love of each other, the love of Tyre. Kavalt, so much Kedusha in this room, you didn't have to do anything. And can you imagine that your heart is so full of hope and yearning and longing for good? It's a little Yerushalayim song that came to me many years ago. It's called Laman Shemot. that I own and I recall the word with the glimmer of hope of a purpose beyond everything that I've known while walking down life's path and singing our life song I'm singing to myself I the march of all the march of Keep on, they are not on the march of love. They are
few days ago, Ari and I went down to the old city of Jerusalem, and we're talking about the role of the Jewish people in the world, what we're here to do, what we're here to light up, and we just spoke to the regular people that we met in the street, because one of the ideas of the show was to show the beauty and depth and wisdom of the Jews of Jerusalem, because we want you to meet the street. And now, meet the street with Ari and Jeremy. What does it mean, really, to be Jewish? To it's all of the truth of who we are. It's the essence of who we are, and something which we have to be proud of. To feel um, connected to uh, to the land, to the people, and to renew your faith in God. Yehudim, the meaning is that we are working with the Lord, we are only working with the Lord, and with the Lord, He gives us the Lord from all the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit. Jewish is a culture for me, and uh, it's a religion. I think it's um, more about living the Torah, like not just reading it, but like living your whole life based on what it says and what it's about. So. Something that we're born into, and it's our responsibility, and uh, it's our, we have to learn about it. Every Jewish person I meet is different, so I could never have one definition and say that is Jewish. <laughs> If there's anyone that could explain what it means to be Jewish, it would be the people of the Museum of King David in the Old City. So what does it mean to be Jewish? Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you and welcome to the King David Museum. Simple, to keep the tradition. That's it. Keep the tradition. A Jewish woman is an incredible gift and it's an incredible responsibility. You have to be multifaceted, be able to be a mother and yet be able to think on your feet and like keep Hashem in mind but doing practical things all the time. To be Jewish it means to know that you have a destination, that you have a reason why you came to this world. And it's not about the way you dress, it's not about nothing, it's just about understanding that our job is to be something that's called such as a, a pot. Jews are the pot of the world. I want to be Jewish. A couple of thousand years of uh, tremendous history. You look at the world, I mean, you look at all the great nations, no one, no one exists anymore. The Greeks are gone, the Romans are gone. It's uh, a surviving nation. We're survivors. We're fighters and survivors. Okay, we're here with the famous dog of Jerusalem wandering the streets, seeking for truth and meaning. Dog, Why did he give us these traditions to follow? To become an angel seen here, like in a... Uh, flesh and blood, but angels. So our job on this world is to become angels on earth. If you go by the Torah and tradition, you will be. What does it mean to be Jewish? It's a wonderful feeling, especially in Israel. You feel part of it, of the whole, as I should say, of the whole group, the chosen group. Oh, to be Jewish. Now say Benishma. Whatever Hashem says, that's what we need to do. What is Judaism really all about? What is Judaism really all about? It's about it's about obeying the laws of God and about living a good life and um, having a quality life. That's what it's about. 
I cannot tell you how excited I am to introduce the guest we have tonight. He's the founder and the dean of Israelite. He's the Rosh Yeshiva, the head of the Yeshiva of Yeshivat Oraita. He's reached thousands, he has thousands of students all over the world, including Isser Danielovich, or as some of you may know, Kirk Douglas. He's reached millions on E! Entertainment Television, on Larry King Live. He really goes out. But what strikes me the most about Rabbi David Aaron is his ability to take a very abstract and difficult to comprehend concept and bring it down to earth so a guy like me can understand it. And I like understanding stuff. <laughs> and it's really such an honor for me, Rabbi David. I'm going to be telling my grandkids that I got to introduce you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Rabbi, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Let's just cut right to it. What do we need to know about God? <laughs> Something small and easy to deal with, right? <laughs> A number of years ago, I was on the Larry King Show, as you kindly mentioned, and uh, it was a show about spiritual health, and uh, there was uh, Deepak Chopra, who uh, was a very famous uh, best-selling author. He's got so many Jewish followers that he refers to himself as a Hindu rather than Hindu. Uh, and there were other uh, representatives of religion. Um, Larry turned to Deepak and said, Deepak, what's your definition of God? And Deepak unloaded this incredible, mystical, metaphysical description of the infinite realm of possibilities. And I went, oi vey, what am I going to say? <laughs> and then um, Larry turned to me and he said, uh, Rabbi, is he watching us? Is he judging us? Like, why do I get the bad rap for God? Is he judging us? So I said, no, I mean, Larry, of course he's watching us. Otherwise, this wouldn't be Larry King live. But... Um, <laughs> I didn't say that because I wanted to get back on the show. But uh, I said, of course he's watching us, but he's not judging us. He's loving us. And there was this, this shocked look on Larry's face. And anyway, as he continued the show, he turns to Marianne Williamson, who's also a Jewish woman who teaches a Christian teaching, uh, sadly enough. And she says, he says, Marianne, what does God mean to you? And she says, I'm with the rabbi. God is all about love. Okay, doing pretty good. Anyways, we get to the first commercial, and I'm feeling really pretty bad, because I feel I've said nothing of great intelligence till this point, and there's like millions of people that I'm desecrating God's name. I haven't said anything intelligent yet. Anyways, at the commercial, Deepak turns to me and says, Rabbi, I love your answers. And Larry says, Rabbi, your answers are fabulous. I'm thinking, what answers? What did I say so amazing? And I realized what I said so amazing, which is so shocking to so many people, that a rabbi said, God loves us. And I've met people say to me that, you know, the difference between Christianity is Judaism is we Christians believe in the God of love and you Jews believe in the God of law. And it's just so not true because we believe in the God of love and what we have to bring back to the world is to understand that we brought to the world the God of love. So if there was one thing... If there was one thing that you could change about Jewish education, because honestly, I haven't heard many rabbis say that. That's not something that's, that's taught very often. We're taught about I'm actually halacha. a priest. I'm not a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be the one thing that you would change in Jewish education? Well, you know, I just came back from South Africa. I was hired to do seminars for the teachers by the Jewish Board of uh, Education. And basically, my message to these teachers, if you've, you've got to talk about God, about Hashem, as compassionate, as loving, as caring, as personal. You know, I grew up with this sense that God is mean, angry. I remember a cute little comic strip of Calvin and Hobbes where Hobbes, the toy tiger, turns to Calvin and says, Calvin, do you believe in God? And Calvin says, well, somebody's out to get me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the one of the saddest things is I grew up going to Hebrew school. I never once heard a rabbi tell me that God loves me. And I was quite sure 
that God hated me, right? And I remember all my Christian little friends. They used to have this little jingle. Jesus loves me, yes I know, because the Bible told me so. I never heard that in Hebrew school, right? In Hebrew school, they taught me, Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. Wherever you go, he'll get you. <laughs> that is what I thought. And so we got to bring back Avinu Malkenu. I grew up thinking about Malkenu. I went only three times a year to shul. It was Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur to get God off my back. If that's all I had to do is one day not eat and stand a lot for two days, I'll do it. Just get off my back. That's what I thought my relationship with God was. Only much later in my life did I discover that Hashem, God, is so close and so, so personal. And that Hashem loves us with the very same love that He loves Himself because we are an expression of God. Because if God, so to speak, were the sun, then every single one of us would be a ray of His light. How silly, how crazy, how in ridiculous would it be to think that the sun would hate or try and hurt one of its rays. We have to understand, we have to spread the message at Hashem is never trying to hurt us, only trying to heal us. But sometimes it hurts to be healed. And everything the Jewish people are going through and everything the world is going through, we always have to remember, Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. And wherever you are, you know that you are loved and you are cared for and you are protected. Rabbi, when you agreed to come on the show, I immediately went and, and got one of your books and I immediately regretted not having read it earlier. I consumed Love is My Religion. And it really fundamentally shifted the prism through which I see the world. And not too many books do that for me. I know you go around the world and you, you sell your books everywhere. You promote them everywhere. And you've dealt with Jews and non-Jews, all sorts of people, all sorts of backgrounds. Have you seen any underlying themes that within people around the world, a thirst, a certain... Uh, trend in, in all of the people you've come across? Yeah, you know, I guess what really surprised me, I've, I've had the opportunity to share Torah with some very successful, famous people. And one of the things that really shocked me is to realize that no matter where you go, and no matter how many, how many people have such incredible confidence and in how successful they are, there's a plague of low self-esteem. And that plague of low self-esteem comes from a lack of ability of really appreciating that we are souls. You know, we are expressions of God. Every single one of us is an individualized expression of God. That's the meaning of the Bible that revealed to the world that we are each creating the image of God. What an incredible idea. If we could look in the mirror and just realize that about ourselves and realize that about each other, wouldn't this be just an amazing place? But the sad thing I'm feeling and I'm watching people are in so much pain. And what they think is the more they have, the more they're going to be. And you know what? It just turns out to be the opposite. That people have a lot and they still feel like they're nothing. And that's because unless you can find that inner self and experience how that inner self is connected to the ultimate self, the source of all self, Hashem, God, then we're never going to be happy. We're never going to be at peace. We're always going to be trying to get more approval of more approval. You know, one of the things I realized and discovered for people, people think that self-esteem and self-worth is a democratic vote. That if I can get a lot of people to like me, then I'm going to feel okay. But you know what? When it comes to self-esteem and really feeling good about yourself, there's only one vote that counts, and that's Hashem's vote. As long as you know that God believes in you, and that's what a Jew says every single morning. We wake up and we thank Hashem, and we say, Moda'ani lefanecha, thanking Him before you. Melech chai v'kayam, king was alive and established. Shechazart abi nishmati, because you gave me back my soul. Rabbe emunatecha, great is your faith. We don't wake up in the morning and say, great is our faith. We wake up and we say, great is your faith. If we could wake up in the morning and realize that Hashem's faith is so great in us that every single person on this earth is completely invested in by Hashem, by God, and Hashem believes in every single one of us, and with every beat of our heart, that's Hashem saying, I'm here, I'm with you, I care, I believe in you, 
And I know you're going to do something really, really important in this world. If we could just feel that way about ourselves, we'll feel that way about others. And what a different place this is going to be. Well, you have so many people that read your books, they see your teachings, and they get turned on. And they say, my goodness, I, I want to understand more about Judaism. I want to understand more about God. What would your advice be to those people that are now at the beginning of their road? What should they be learning? What should they be listening to? What should they be? What is their advice? Should they start celebrating Shabbat? How, what's the first step that they should take on their journey back to Judaism? Well, it sounds like an opportunity for a commercial over here, so I'm not going to take that. But uh, <laughs> take it. I would, I would highly recommend, without being, uh, you know, being completely objective, is that I'd say check out Israelite, I-S-R-A-L-I-G-H-T dot org. <laughs> and uh, check out some more of the books that I've written as well as we just have, uh, we've just created a new website where you can download hundreds of talks of myself as, my, as well as my colleague Rabbi Benny Friedman as well as other educators Israelite. The first step to Judaism is to learn. And the more you understand yourself and the more you understand who Hashem is and the more you understand who the Jewish people are and why on earth we are here, the more you're going to love Judaism. In fact, Rav Cook explains that there's no way you couldn't love Hashem. And there's no way you couldn't love human beings. And there's no way you couldn't love Torah. But that sounds crazy. What are those? Lots of people don't love God. Lots of people don't love Torah. Lots of people don't love Jews. That's because they don't know who God is. And that's because they don't know who the Jewish people are. And that's why they have no, because they have no clue what the Torah is. If you really knew who Hashem is, and you really know who the Jewish people are all about, if you really understood the joy and the power that the Torah brings to a person, how could you not love it? So what is the role of the Jewish people on earth? We have this transcendental being that's a sun with rays. Why a Jewish people? What are we all about? Why did God choose us? What are we here for? You know, uh, I'm going personally through a very challenging period of my life. My, both my parents passed away in the last year. And, uh, you know, and suddenly I find myself getting up and saying Kaddish. And Kaddish is such an amazing thing because a lot of people think that when you say Kaddish, you're really praying for your parents and asking in some way that they have some greater, easier transition into a higher world. And what's really surprising to a lot of people when they read the Kaddish in English, they discover that we're not saying anything about the deceased. We're actually praising God. And I know that a lot of people mourning, and I certainly understand that now a lot better, like me, I'm going to get up and praise God. I mean, if there's anybody right now that's not in the mood of praising God, it's going to be someone who just lost someone so close to them. And if you can get up and tell the world how great God is. So, you know, a lot of people wonder, and I certainly wonder for many years, what's so chosen about the Jewish people? Chosen for stay wrote. Chosen for constant challenge. Chosen for a holocaust. What's so chosen about the Jewish people? But you have to understand, the only person that could get up and really tell the world how God is so great is a person who's got a good reason to think God isn't so great. And if that person still can find within themselves and still find within themselves and in their life the light and the beauty and the joy, if they can get up from their mourning, from their pain, from their challenge and say with their heart that God is great and that God's name should spread over the world and that the consciousness of God's greatness is the source of the greatest joy in our lives, well, then people are going to listen. The Jewish people are chosen to get up and tell the world that Hashem loves the world, Hashem is with the world, Hashem cares about us, and even in the most deepest, most painful times in our lives, Hashem is with us. And that moment, as much as it's so painful right now, we will see someday was the very transition and the very conversion of our darkness into the most incredible, powerful light in our lives. I want you to send out a message to the world, the message from Rabbi David Aaron, and you've just now come out with a brand new book. What is the message of this new book? Uh, my new book is called Living a Joyous Life, The True Spirit of Jewish Practice. And you know, if someone would have said to me about uh, 40 or 30 years ago that I would write a book about the, the, the living a joyous life, the true spirit of Jewish practice, I think it's nuts. Because I never associated with Ju Judaism with joy, I never associated Judaism as a source of happiness. And now I'm going around teaching this and I'm writing about this. And um, that's what's so crazy. What's so crazy is that so many of our people in so much of the world thinks 
that Judaism is not a path of joy. They think it's all about fearing God, fearing God. God doesn't want us to fear him in the sense that we're trembling is going to hurt us. That's not the meaning. The true meaning is yira, and yira means respect. Yira means reverence. Yira means awe. And that's a sense of real love and connection and attraction. So this new book is really about daily Jewish life and how it actually brings joy to our lives. What's really amazing is I thank God I get lots of emails from all over the world, from Jews and from non-Jews, you know. Recently I did a book signing and a fellow came up to me. He was in his early 60s and he warmly shook my hand and he said, you know, Rabbi, you don't know me, but you have touched and transformed my life. So, wow, thank you very much. He said, I'm a priest. I said, oh, okay. And I've been looking for material for my sermons. And I came upon your books. And I started reading all your books. And I've included all your books in my sermons. And I'm giving over your books Sunday in church. And I'm like, okay, great. And now I've decided to convert to Judaism. Because you imagine that. Yeah. 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 By the way, his name was Jesus. I'm just joking over there. But I want you to understand that the message of Jewish people is that God is one. And if you understand that God is one, and ultimately there's really nothing but God, we're all an expression, an aspect, included in his light. When you understand that, how could you not love each other? And that's what Judaism is about. We brought to the world, love your neighbor as yourself. And the only way you could love your neighbor as yourself, the Pasa continues, is by knowing that I am God. When you understand that the I, the ultimate I, the source of all awareness, the source of all love, the source of all vitality, that is Hashem. And all of us are rays of that ultimate I. Then how can we not love each other? All of us, not just the Jewish people. We have a mitzvah, we have a commandment to love all people. And that means not just in your heart but with your hands to help people in every way we can. And the more we can bring that message of love to the world, the more we're going to love each other and the more the world is going to love us too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Avraham Avinu. Why was he chosen? People say that he was the first monotheist, but that's not true. Noah believed in one God. Shem and Ever had an entire yeshiva. Why was Avraham chosen? I mean, the entire world revolves around Avraham. Yishmael came from Avraham, the entire Arab world. Esau, the entire Western world. All of civilization as we know it, all is around this one chosen man. So what was so special about Avraham that made him the chosen one? According to the Rambam, Avraham was the manifestation of loving God. Because when you really love God, you can't help but tell everyone else about him. You can't help but going out and spreading the word. You can't help but every person you meet, even if he's a big tattooed guy with earrings all around him, say, have you heard about the God of Israel? That's why Avraham was chosen. The Jewish people in the last 2,000 years, we were worried about surviving, but now it's time that we return to an authentic Judaism, a biblical Judaism, and reconnect to the spirit of Avraham Avinu, and finally light up the entire world. Shalom from Jerusalem. <laughs> Bye-bye.
Shalom, Aleinu, Yisrael, 